Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester, and welcome to Panhandle Outdoors 2020. We're glad to be here. Had a great Christmas break. Hope everybody had a good time and got to do a lot of fun things with family and friends. And it's hard to believe we're starting another year here. It's just when you say 2020, just has a has a good ring to it. But just whoever thought we're going to be around at 2020. And I remember when it hit 2000. When in 1990, we we're going to say, "You believe it's going to be 2000?" And that's the way it is. So we're we're glad to be here. Let's take our let's get started. I got all kind of stuff to talk about. All kind of good things happen over the holidays and. We definitely gonna, won't get it all in today, but we'll get started on today and get ready for uh, for some good stuff to show you. High today 72, uh, low 66, and the water temperature 63. Of course, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. River readings got Appalachia Blunstown's at a 14.2, and the Choctaw Carville at a 6.8. So. Uh, and that's going to be moving around now. The rain's been coming in and out. It seemed like we had a rainy holiday. A lot of rain come in. To me, it seemed like we had a lot and some fog and pretty dampness. But we had some beautiful days. Hope you were able to get out and enjoy it. We did a few outdoor things, but we certainly had a good time. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Looking at low tide at 9.15 this morning and a high tide at 6.21 this afternoon. Pretty steady tides. We've got a, got a good weekend of tides coming up. All right, let's take our break. and We'll be right back. Okay, let's get started. I got a couple of short videos today of some things we did over the holidays, but I also got a stack of pictures. I won't get them all in today, but we'll get some of them in. So let's get started on the pictures. I want to start off the year. How about this is how you look when the fishing rod bends. Is that not a great picture? And uh, don't we all feel that way? I still get excited when I see that pole bend and I run over there to it. And uh, my buddy Chase Smith, Chase, you know, he was on our show before, and he's working on a doctoral degree at Baylor University. And he came home to see his mom and dad for Christmas. He and his wife did, and he, one of the first things he did, he went fishing, and the second thing he did went hunting. So it's great to see Chase, and when he gets time, we're going to get him back on the show. But look what his mom sent to Cameron Brown Smith, and uh, their rooster in Mariana and, and Bonifay, the parents were from. And look what Chase caught off the beach. Of course, he threw it back. And here is a picture of him doing his, doing his scientific work out there at the lab at Baylor. So, Chase looking good. All right. Uh, this is a special picture. This is up in Liberty County, actually in Bristol. Uh, this is Michael Richard's son. This is Braden. And he, this is his first buck. And we were actually up there. We had our Chester get together the, the night after Christmas. Our, all the cousins and all, we all get together over there at Matthew's house. And we're in the backyard. And, Michael and Matthew were best friends. They played ball together in high school. Came up, said, I knew, can we clean our, our buck at your house? And, my, and Matthew's got a big old place to clean clean deer. If you're from the if you're from the region, you understand what everybody in, in, in the neighborhood and community, there's always one or two homes you can go in the backyard and clean your buck. And this is, so here's a picture. Here's a picture of Michael and Michael's wife, Heather, and they've uh, some local folks, and they're the proud of proud of you, Brayden. Good talk with ninth grader there, Liberty County High School. That's his first book. Good job there. Matt Spencer up there in, uh, around Alpha sent his picture. She, perse she persevered to the very end for this one. Good job. I see the young people at it. Mandy Warren's daughter. Uh, who's more excited about Riley's Christmas gift, okay, or dad or either Riley? And uh, archery is always a great gift to, to give. People, uh, girls and boys love to shoot a bow and arrow generation after generation. Pam Peterson Kelly, uh, here, here Junior, Junior Kelly. Junior played ball for me many years ago, and he, he is a fine outdoorsman and a good working man, and look at that nice buck. And uh, he, deer sausage is coming to my freezer real soon, so good one there. Uh, let's, let's jump on fishing real quick. Uh, Mike, Mike McGraw, he said it's called illegal pompano. There it is right there. Called illegal pompano just before 7 p.m. This is just the other day. Nothing happened and then this. Made my evening. Sand flea, fish bite, and peel fresh shrimp on a short line. Never caught one this late in the evening. And here, here's a better. Now this is the story continues. Uh, here's a picture of it right here. He's excited. It gets better. 
because he caught another one. Is that not fine? Pompano fishing. And uh, let's talk a second about pompano fishing in, in the wintertime. They're here. Not, not many of them are here, but there's a group of them here. Scott Lindsay and I were talking about it, and he, he used to really target them in December, he and another guy. And, uh, they're, but it's my, not many people fish for pompano in the wintertime. There's not a lot of them here, but they are here. All right, speaking of fishing, let's go on this video. Bill Allen and I were able to take off a day. Just, we just stopped over doing it and took off a day and ran down to Appalachia Coal to put in Abercrombie Landing and fished over there, John, Bob Jones uh, Cut and uh, St. Mark's Little Creek and all up in that area that we usually go to. And just had a wonderful time. I didn't, I fished more than I filmed on this one. So this is a little short video, usually a lot longer, but I, we caught some fish, but I just, well, I was more, more interested in, in fishing than filming. So Jeff, let's go and roll this video. There you go. Yeah, Winston let me into the game, but he let me into the small part of the game. But it, <laughs> it's a trout. That's a trout. There you go. It's a start. Another monster. Another monster. There you go. Uh, fish is a fish, right? There you go. All right. It's about the middle of the day. It's absolutely beautiful, but Bill and I were just talking. Uh, we just don't see a lot of people down here. That might be a sign. We'll well, catch we it. got a river on a hard rise, and uh, it's jumped from four feet the first part of the week to 13 today, going to 20 by the weekend. Uh, that's and that's the, usually yeah. not a good sign, but we've been planting, and we don't get the chance to fish together that often, so we were going heck or high water. There you go. It turned out to be high water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Plenty of high water. <laughs> so. Check out this palm tree, growing in the water. <laughs> I wonder. Look at that. How do you water that tree? Same fish. Okay, we had a, we had a double we had on. A double, first double of the day. I, I, I let mine go. You couldn't the add them up and make 15 inches out of it. <laughs> we had a double. They're, they're in the spot right here. If y'all want to know where we're fishing, y'all, look at the curve here. I got uh, bushes <laughs> on the right, bushes on on the left, and there's some trees in the back. Y'all recognize this spot? That's where they are today. All right, we're going to go. Unless he's swimming at the boat. He hit hard. There he is. We, we own them now, folks. Oh, they're getting bigger. We own them now. They're 13. Yeah. I guarantee you he's 13. They're just as fat and healthy as they can be. They are pretty. They're pretty. Good jumper. Now, he's another there you go another fat 14 maybe all right all right bill got a good one back here we moved over another spot one that wants to spend more time on top yeah he's top order oh now he's coming at the boat he's pulling all the trout. good trout pretty trout Nice one. Oh, yeah. I'll get him in the boat. All right. That's a nice trout. Yeah. Good job. Tried to, tried to help you out. But... <laughs> All right. That's not a bad trout. That's a pretty trout. That ain't a bad trout. All right. He'll, uh, on, even on this scale. He's going. He's, <laughs> he's way over. Yeah, he's. Probably yeah, he's legal 16 or 17. All right. But there you go. All right. That's your, That's your little cutting group. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. That was a fun trip. And, you know, we just, this time of year, December, we just sort of trolled along. And I actually didn't change colors. I kept that electric chicken color on the whole time. Normally, I'm changing colors. I just, uh, I was just in a zone right there. And I just enjoyed uh, doing what I was doing. So, 
Uh, we, we caught enough. Uh, Bill and Donna had a good meal, and I, uh, Gail and I, uh, we, we decided to pass them up and let Bill and Donna have them this time. So we'll get them next time. It was a good trip. Now, let's, I got some more pictures, and I got another video coming up. Let's start up back on some pictures. And this, uh, this is a good one to start on. Stress is caused by not hunting enough. It is so special to get outdoors. It could be on the water or in the woods, but it's very stress relieving. Take my word for it. If you don't want to take my word for it, try it yourself. I know a lot of y'all do. This is, I got aggravated at this. Jason Whitfield posted this, and I'm gonna sort of read to you. I need help find out who poached two of our pet axes at our family farm this week. The farm is located between Fountain and Bluntstown. Uh, that's sort of off 274, not too far from my place up there. The poacher shot the deer from the road and then cut a hole in the fence and pulled them out to the road. As he please share this post if you know of any people that may live in the areas. If you have any information, message me or call the FWC. The farm is called Goldenrod Farms. That's Grover Davis, is, uh, Jason is Grover's uh, son-in-law. All right, here, this is their pet axis deer, okay? They, all right, here we go. I got some more pictures of them. This is this is aggravating. These these are pets. So what somebody did? They see where they cut the fence wire. These are some low life poachers right here. And uh, here's another angle. They drove up the road right there. Saw them shot, cut the wire, shot them. And if that's not a scoundrel, I don't know what is. I I, I wrote a I sent I sent him a post I, and uh, I, I told him uh, the Panhandle Outdoors will put two hundred dollars in the pot as a reward to catch uh, these low-life poachers because it's just that, that's no, no sense in that. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen there, but I sure if you know anything, let the FWC know and, uh, and we'll try to try to catch these folks. That, that's, that, there's no excuse in that whatsoever. Uh, that's awful. Okay, Ryan McLean and Marcy McLean. Uh, Ryan's a pilot with the U.S. Air Force and Marcy. Uh, the team mom and, and volleyball, their daughter and my granddaughter have been playing a lot of volleyball together over the years, and these are good folks. Big, con this is the little brother now. Big congratulations to Cole on his first deer on Doe Day. Special thanks to Pat and Kenley for guiding him along. So there you go. You made Panhandle Outdoors. Look at there. Doe Day has been really good. A lot, a lot of folks did good. Check this guy out. <laughs> okay, I actually want to take it. It was cool that morning. Remember that right before Christmas, it got we had a little cool snap. But I promise you, if you wrap up and layer after layer, I wouldn't call one bit. But we had a, we had a good time and had Bill. What I did, what I tried to do, I rub it in. When I catch a fish, I, I sent a message to uh, to my grandkids or some buddies of mine. Say, I wish you were here. I wish you weren't in school. I wish you weren't working. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's some of the things uh, I want to be aware of. Uh, if you want to share the joy. Now, okay, this next video, got another, took, uh, spent some time at the Cape as we always do during the holidays. And I want to tell you all again now, I've, told, I've said over and over again, if you get a chance to go to, to the area, some of this area uh, like Cape Sandblast during the winter time, and, and first of all, there's not much crowd, but it's just beautiful. And the water, just, uh, I call it that winter clarity. The, our, ba our bay system, throughout our bay system, from over Choctatcha Bay all, all along, is just clear, uh, especially at St. Andrew Bay and St. Joe Bay. It's just super clear in the wintertime. So we're over there, I told her, I said, let's go over there. I want to run over to State Park. And we're, not, we're right outside of State Park, at St. Joe Peninsula State Park, and see what progress has been made on, on redoing things. So I said, uh, we had the camera with us, and I, we'll take it with us now about where we go. I said, I shot a little three minute video. And the, the good news is it's, it's looking good. And to have some of the areas uh, is, is smaller because it's not going to hold as many people, of course, because of the parking area. But you're going to see in the video, I'm going to tell you what's coming on, but you'll see what's going on. The bad news, uh, well, I wouldn't say, I'll, I'll tell you the bad news when we get back uh, from the video. So, Jeff, let's go ahead and roll this video. All right, Panhandle Outdoors. Down here to give you a review of what's happening at St. Joseph Peninsula State Park. And this is to be the 2020 forecast. It's looking good. Uh, you can see that this is the swimming area back there is going to be good. No problem here. But they got they got one-way traffic now. Come in here, vehicles only. With trailers, the store is going to be open. And we're just going there, just an overall view of it. And it, like I say, it'd be one-way traffic now. So let's walk through it.
it's rare you see the St. Joseph Peninsula State Park boat ramp parking lot empty, but it is. But here it is. Everything looks good. The ramp looks good. Harbor, you see, it's changed a little bit. Okay, we moved on down. This is toward the end. What's fascinating is that sand is blown. We parked over there last time. Y'all see that sand pile? I'm gonna go over there in a minute. But uh, you see that it's gonna be hard to figure out where the fish are in Eagle Harbor because of what's going on with the sand shift. All right, there's a the campground, the old campground across this sand spit and Speaking of sand, this area right here, I parked here last time I was here, and look how the sand has blown up <laughs> into this area. Uh, and they have planted, they, they bulldozed the sand dune area. I don't know if you can see it. They pushed up sand, so we have sand dunes starting back and coming all the way to the state park campground. And it, it has closed in. I guess people are still parking here. Let me see, let me check this out. Hold on. So the area closed. Uh oh. Hold on. This is a protected, environmentally sensitive area. Disturbance by humans or pets is prohibited. So you cannot come back into here. I saw some people here while Look at those people over yonder. So this whole section now is closed between here and the campground area, so they can rebuild it. The area closed. Welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. And by the way, I was down there a couple of times in and out, and you remember the little fillet knife that came in a case I recommended one of the Christmas presents to give this year. They told me they sold over 300 of those fillet knives and a lot of them I've seen it on the show and went down there and got it because the price was just really, really good. So that's that's good. In fact, uh, we gave uh, the one I got, I, we gave it to uh, Mason for one of his little Christmas presents. They're, they're handy. So anyway, good folks down at Blue Water and uh, they're right on top of things going on down there. Uh, our time, by the way, 5.18 to 7.18 this morning, and tonight, 5.39 to 7.39. I want to say a good morning over the holidays. Ran into Patrick Pilcher from Freeport, a Walton County uh, property appraiser. Uh, he loves that early Walton County. We, we started talking, ran into him at a, at a sporting goods store, and we talked and talked. We had the best talk. He watches the show every morning. He loves the book, Full Box. He loves that old history, and the Pilcher family uh, started up in Walton County. Some of the Pilchers came in in Bay County. I, I knew some of them. A lot of y'all know the Pilcher family, but had a, such an interesting talk. And I, that's one of the biggest pluses of this show is running into, running into folks and talking about the outdoors, talking about the heritage and history. It just had a, had a good time talking to him. Okay, let's talk about, we just showed St. Joe State Park. Tom Gurley just sent this. This is a kiddie pool. This is interesting now. Tom being such a good photographer, but I was showing Jeff what's fascinating. Uh, a couple of things. It's really clear and really shallow on the, this lower end, you know, closest to the, on the bottom end of the picture. Then as you get back, look where they built like a break, a break wall. That's rocks. Uh, see that right in there in the center of the page? They built a wall there. So uh, I know that's to help control erosion. That's going to be interesting to see it develop, but that's, you know, that's, that's engineering at its finest right there. So that's going to be fascinating to see, and there's going to be some good fishing, and it's going to affect it and all. So uh, anyway, well, let me, uh, I want to talk to you all about the, uh, the bad news on the state park. 
get back to St. Joe State Park. I was uh, talking to some of the folks in charge down there. And I said, when is the campground going to open back up? And I, I looked, uh, and bottom line, it is their estimate that a campground in St. Joe State Park will not open up to about 2023. Okay, this is 20, that's three years from now. Why it's going to take so long, I have no idea. But what is fascinating, I was going to put it up on Google Earth, and uh, we don't have a good Google Earth picture. This is, the latest, this is the latest Google Earth picture we have. All right, okay, there it is. Remember when it was cut through about a year ago? Uh, it's all filled in now. But right there in the center, it's all sand. So uh, it, you can walk across it, but you saw in the video where they've actually, you cannot walk across it, but it's filled in with sand. It is now an environmentally sensitive area, and I can understand that. They want to see oats and all, and everything gets settled and packed in. And, and once that starts growing, uh, they'll, they'll put a road in there. So I don't know if the delay is going to be in, in getting road beds or trying to get electricity out there. I, I don't really know. Or, of course, you got to put a septic uh, system, a, a wastewater system, and a water line. There's a lot of work to be done, but uh, there's no building out there. I mean, you don't have to do much building other than the uh, bathhouse. So I don't, I don't know why it's going to take three years, but that's what they're telling me. Hopefully, uh, we can speed things along. We'll have to need to call the governor or somebody to tell them we want to I know a lot of folks enjoy camping there, but it's going to be interesting how they're going to develop it and how it's going to be laid out. My bet is going to be more of the larger spaces compared to, uh, to what's going on is, you know, now because larger spaces for the motor homes and all. Okay, let's go to another subject real quick. Uh, this is some old school research right here. This is a uh, this came out of the Calhoun Liberty, Liberty Journal and it's really good because I wanted to share this with you. This is the Tri-State Bob White Symposium. Uh, it's going to be next month, actually this month now, this is going to be, I got it right there during Christmas. I get the Calhoun Liberty Journey once, uh, once a week, and it has a lot of good information on all kind of local stuff. And what they're doing, it's part of Quail Forever, and it's going to be the University of Florida Extension Office. It's going to be on January the 30th. It's going to be, now actually what's going to happen uh, from 9 to 2, and just get together, uh, as they're trying to restore the Pine Savannah of the Florida Panhandle, and if and I still remember stories of, of my dad and granddad talking about the pine trees, and nothing was planted in the rows. Just the original pine tree it was a pine savanna with wire grass and all, and, and just open areas with palmettos. And you've seen pictures of it. And then the paper companies came in and just cut them all down and put everything in rows, which is not natural. So there's an effort to restore the pine savannas, and the effort to do that, they want to get 82,000 acres. And the, by one of the biggest things is going to be such a plus for the quail population. I'm planning on going there. You got to let them know, make reservations, go there. I don't think it charges for landowners who want to help get some quail on their property uh, restored. And and we're there all make, we're all making an effort to do that. And we, if more and more of us doing that, so I'm going to have more information on it later. But I just if you want to go and put it in your calendar for January the 30th, I think that's a Thursday. Uh, toward the end of this month at Mariana at the University of Florida Extension Office. We've run out of time. i still got a whole pile of stuff to talk about. So we're going to talk about it tomorrow. So we're glad to be back and glad to have you back. And thank you so much for the feedback. And, and what, a, what a wonderful Christmas vacation was had by so many people and so many of our viewers uh, stayed in contact with us. So we're going to wrap it up. We've got t tomorrow now. We're going to give away one more time out of Pickle Jar. We're going to give away... And then next week, I'll start sending names in. You have a great day. Do something good today for your fellow man. Enjoy the great outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.